In this lecture, we'll be looking at axioms and rules for probabilities. So, Cormac Borough was a mathematician in the 30s who put together this uh, axiomatic approach to probability. In other words, he put this on a firm mathematical foundation. And uh, what we'll do is cover just some of those aspects today in this lecture. So, first of all, let me get my pen right over here. Yeah, got it. So, there are three axioms, or if you like, assumptions for probability. The first is probability of the whole sample space S must be equal to 1. In other words, something must happen. The second is probabilities can't be negative. They must be bigger than or equal to 0. For any event, A probability of A is bigger than or equal to 0. And the last is if two events are disjoint, in other words, they have no intersections. So, we've all seen this idea of intersections in Venn diagrams before. There's A and there is B. If they're disjoint, they have no intersection, then probability of A or B, A union B, is just probability of A plus probability of B. So these are the three axioms. So using these, we can de derive the usual probability rules you must have seen. So here's those probability rules. The first is probability of the null set or the empty set is equal to zero. So if you haven't seen this symbol before, this is the symbol phi, and this represents the empty or null set. There's nothing in the set. Probability of A complement is 1 minus probability of A. We saw complements earlier in the lecture notes. If you haven't, haven't seen this, look back. And any event A must have probabilities lying between 0 and 1 inclusive. So probability of A must be either 0 or 1 and something in between. And then the more what we call the general addition rule. This is the third, uh, P4 there. This holds even if the events aren't independent and sorry aren't disjoint so here it says probability of a union b is probability of a plus probability of b minus intersection and again you have previously have seen this in the form of venn diagrams here are the events a and b and so if i look at probability of a union b that's everything that is contained in a or b or both so probability of a is that bit over there and probability of B is that bit over there and if I add those up this middle bit is actually added up twice and so we subtract that once so we are left with just probability of A or B now we can actually prove these using Colmer rules, rules if you like the three axioms we saw earlier and we'll have a look at the proofs you don't need to remember the proofs but the ideas of how it works is important the first is probability of the down set is equal to zero now we note that the samples, the entire sample space and the null set are disjoint because the intersection is nothing. And also, the union is the whole lot. And probability of S is equal to 1 from our axioms. So I can write probability of S union phi is simply probability of S. And because these are disjoint, I can use the addition law, law which says probability of S union probability of phi is probability of S plus probability of phi. And that's probability of S. And I cancel the probability of S from both sides, I get probability of phi equals 0. The next one says that for A complement, the probability of A complement is 1 minus probability of A. Now, we know that A complement and A is disjoint because one complements mean that A complement contains everything that A doesn't contain. So, A intersect A complement is the null set. And also, A and A complement together form in the entire sample space. So, if you want to visualize this from a Venn diagram point of view, if that's A over there, and the box represents the entire sample space, and everything outside here is a complement. And so you can see that A union A complement is of the entire sample space, and A intersect A complement is the empty set. So again, if I use my additional law, probability of A union A complement, well, A union A complement is S, and by P3 and P1, essentially, probability of A union A complement is probability of A plus probability of A complement and probability of S is equal to 1. So you can see from here easily that probability of A complement is 1 minus probability of A. Now here's the question of course it follows that probability of A is 1 minus probability of A complement as well. So that's another way of looking at it. The third one says that all probabilities can't be bigger than zero, uh, 1 or less than 0. So in other words the lie between 0 and 1 inclusive. So by P2 we know the probability of A is bigger than or equal to 0. 
I can write that as zero less than equal to probability of A. So this is the left hand side of this particular inequality satisfied. That's the left hand side. Now also by P2 and a probability of A complement is bigger than equal to zero. But probability of A complement and A are related by this expression. Probability of A is one minus probability of A complement. This part here is bigger than equal to zero. So the entire thing must be less than equal to one. So I'm taking something positive from here and something that uh, is not uh, bigger than what well, is po yeah, positive. So that means that this little bit must be less than equal to one. So it follows the probability of A lies between zero and non-inclusive. The last one, the general addition rule, is a bit more difficult to prove. We can look at this as I saw earlier using Venn diagrams. Another way of thinking of this would be, first of all, let's consider probability of A. The probability of A here, A is made up of two bits. One bit is here uh, that I'm going to shade, and that is probability without B, A intersect B complement. We read this as A without B. And the other part here is when A and B happen together. This is A intersect B. And so together, those two bits are disjoint. And if I take the union, I get all of A in there. So A is probability of A is probability of A with B plus A without B. That's how we can read this. So A with B and A without B. And so from there, I can work out the probability of A union B is equal to what I've said there. You'll probably see this in Tudes. If you don't get this, ask somebody afterwards. Now, this particular rule I've got over here, that I'm underlining here, is actually one form of what's called the theorem of total probabilities. Oops, I lost something here. So that's one form of it, and we'll see this afterwards later on. So that covers probability rules. Now, just some quick applications and some examples. The first one is, if I let probability of A equal 0.4, probability of B is 0.5, and probability of A intersect B is 0.3, I want to calculate these things. So the first says, at least one of A and B occurs. At least one means one occurs, or the other occurs, or both occur. So that's essentially A union B. So part A, probability of A union B. If I use my rule, this probability of A plus probability of B minus the intersection, put the numbers in there, that's 0.4 for A, 0.5 for B minus the intersection, I get 0.6. Next part says only A occurs. So if only A occurs, as we saw earlier, what I'm looking for is A but not B. In other words, I'm looking for really A without B. So this is the part over here where only A occurs, and that actually is A intersect B complement. So, if I go back and write this again as in terms of the theorem of total probabilities, as probability of A is probability of A intersect B, plus probability of A intersect B complement. And so that part that I'm after, probability of A intersect B complement, which is essentially just A occurring, if I rewrite this sec first expression over here, I get probability of A minus probability of A intersect B. So in other words, this part here that I'm looking at, this part over here, is all of A minus this little bit over here. And I can put the numbers in. Probability of A was from before 0.4, and A intersect B was 0.3. Subtract them, I get 0.1. And finally it says, neither A nor B occurs. In other words, this time I want neither of them to occur. So this is the same as saying, both occur. This is A union B, this is one or the other occurs. This complement is what I'm after over here. And so there's simply one minus probability of A union B. If you look at this as saying A nor B occurs, you can take a look at this if you wish. And the Venn diagram again, if you don't want any of A or B occurring, you'll be outside over here. And so that's clearly the, the complement of A union B. So that's a quick example to put us on, on our way. And you'll see more examples afterwards. In the next recorded lecture, we'll take a look at conditional probability. Thank you.